Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast recording. And today I am so happy to have the Authority Gang with me. We've got Samantha King and Crystal Duku. And unfortunately, our Carol's not here today. But we're excited for her because she's speaking at an event. And that is one of the ways that you become an authority is by getting out there. And so today we're going to be talking about getting out of your comfort zone. Because mm-hmm. if you want to be that authority in your, in your niche, you are going to get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So ladies, first thoughts today. Yeah, well, I, I'll go first. I think that, you know, this is such a great topic because when you're putting yourself out there and you're, and, and we have to put ourselves out there to build authority, um, it can be quite uncomfortable because you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do, but you're also tooting your own horn. And for some people, um, especially women, that can be quite a challenge. Um, and, and I think that it's, it's really important that we remind ourselves that we're awesome and we deserve to, to, we deserve the opportunity to, to, to say like, I'm here and uh, this is what I do. And I believe that I, I, I believe that I can help you and here, and, and here, and this is the thing when I, when I went to uh, Thinkific, the, the platform I used to host online courses to their summit in January, they said, you know, and, and Crystal can, Crystal can chime in after this, but they said, you know, traffic and social proof is going to be huge this year in online courses. And, and I think social proof is huge in, in a lot of online businesses and, and as many of us hit it. So it, it really is about saying, you know, I'm here, I'm great at what I do. I believe I can help you. And here are the other people that I've helped. Right. And so it's so important that as you're part of this journey, you're also grabbing uh, testimonials as social proof from your, from your, from your, from your past clients. What do you think, Crystal? I, I think that's completely correct in what you're saying. We, especially again, going back to now really being into this virtual world, you have to, you know, I can show up and be like, well, Hey guys, this is me. This is what I do. This is, this is, and you may not have a problem going on about that, right? And this is what I do. But to your point, Samantha, getting other people and having them, um, you know, back you up or verify or say or add that testimonial really adds that credibility, which is so important in the online world. Because remember, you're not out there net really meeting people face to face for them to get to know you. So having that really builds your credibility, which is important, which can also be a thing that you might feel uncomfortable with, right? Asking someone for help, that might be something that's like, I'm not comfortable with that. I just wanna do everything by myself. If someone wants to say something good about me, but no, we have to ask. Closed mouths do not get fed. And Ooh, like that. <laughs> that's your tweetable. That's your tweetable for today, guys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> some, I, I had learned it from I heard someone say it at a training, and I'm like, I, I forgot who said it, but it it I can't take credit for it. Sorry, but I wish I could. But I can't remember who said it, but I stuck with it. Closed mouths do not get fed. And mm-hmm. that is probably something that we as entrepreneurs have to be comfortable asking for help asking for those that we've helped to hey can you give me a testimonial can you can you back up what i'm saying can you put it online on 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 google or on or write a review for me Mm -hmm. then that's how it grow yeah because people won't always and this is the thing right like like just going right on your closed mouths won't get fed people think that well if they have a great time they'll they'll leave a review right? Or they'll post it on social media. And and sometimes depending on what it is, they will, but they may not leave that review because they don't think to do it. So for example, you know, yesterday we went snowmobiling. There's a little bit of snow about 45 minutes north of, north of Barrie, Ontario, where I live. And (laughs) there was still, we were up in Penetanguishing and there was still a little bit of snow and so we made the last, we were like the last snowmobile ride of this company's 
snowmobile riding season. And, you know, that to me, first of all, was putting me outside of my comfort zone because I've never driven like a snowmobile. They're like, oh, have you driven a snowmobile or a sea do or And I was like, yeah. um, but also like, as I was talking to them and, and we were, and they were taking pictures and they said, you know, like, we'll text you whatever we post up or whatever we, whatever pictures we take. Cause of course for them as a business, it's great if I have them for my memories, but also to share. Mm -hmm. But I also said to them, because they didn't bring this up. Um, they didn't mention reviews. And I was like, are, do you collect Google reviews? Like, can I leave a Google review? Right. But here's the thing, not everybody's going to do that. So we as business owners have to do that. We have to, and I love how you phrased it as asking for help. Mm -hmm. Right. If, yeah. And if you struggle and if you struggle with cooting your own horn and you struggle with, you know, putting yourself out there uh, for whatever reason, this really is just about asking for help. And that can also be a challenge. Well, you know, one of the things that I talk about my clients with when they're doing their book is the fact that, you know, there'll be about that top 10 to 15 percent of people who love you, who are your brand ambassadors, who think, you know, you're the cat's meow. You know, you you are like the most amazing person in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And they want to promote you. Mm -hmm. and, and you're actually denying them a blessing when you don't give them an opportunity to promote you. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, what's really important about this is the fact that it has to be part of your business plan. Um, as you guys know, I've been starting the Entrepreneur Emporium e-commerce site. And one of the things I've been doing, and most of the people who have purchased have been people I've known, you know, I've been out promoting to, you know, my network right now uh, mm -hmm. to get things started. But what I do is when somebody purchased, I, you know, Facebook message them or I email them and I say, hey, can you help me out? You know, I'm trying to build this, you know, I need some reviews. Can you go back? Because they're telling me how much they like the products, right? So I'm like, okay, can you go back and leave a review for me? Mm -hmm. And here's the other yeah. thing too, is, is that it's okay to reward people in small ways for a review and not monetarily, mm -hmm. right? You can't, you can't pay for a review, but you could offer a discount code on their mm -hmm. next purchase for leaving you a review. Yes. You know, you can offer them a free digital cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one thing that, Samantha and I had talked about, and we're actually on our Facebook live. We're going to divide that into two podcast episodes, um, okay. you know, but, you know, take that freebie you have mm -hmm. and offer it as, as a thank you. You know, if, if, if you can leave me a review, I've got this little thank you for you. Yes. Yeah. There's also other things you can do is especially like if they're, if they're a, a customer of yours and you know, their address, right. A beautiful, just a, a quick handwritten note. It is something that's really meaningful. Um, and, and so there's so many different ways to do, to, to do that. But I think, Kim, what you touched on there that's really um, important is, is, you know, making it a part of your system, yes. making it a part of your process, right? So Crystal, I, I'm sure when you're working with customers, uh, with your clients, it really is helping them figure out whichever platform it is that you're managing for them on social media. How do we get reviews on that? on that platform and, and where are we going after reviews? Like there's a strategy to it, but there's also, you know, the process to it. So if you're, if they're not active on LinkedIn, do they really need LinkedIn recommendations, right? If, if they're not, if they're not active on Facebook, is that, do they need Facebook reviews right now? Right. Or do we go where they're active first, but also how do we get them? Right. And I always, I, as I, I go back to it, I always see, especially as you're building, ask, ask because in asking too you form a relationship with your audience right mm -hmm. you're you're engaging because the goal of social media as well is to build relationships sometimes people think oh i'm just going to post my stuff there and bam i'm going to sell mm -hmm. right and i have to i always have to say social media is not to sell you don't you're not that's not your sales that you cannot expect that your sales are going to be driven from social media. It's, mm -hmm. it's about building your brand, your messaging. People can come through there, but it's about developing your community and your tribe and your relationship. Mm -hmm. And I've said to clients, it's like, you have to go in. We want reviews. Let's ask. Let's ask. You want people to share your stuff? 
sometimes I'll be playing out sound like I'm begging on a post. Can you please like and share this? It really means a lot to me. And people share it. When you put that, you ask, you tell, you tell, you tell your, your group and your tribe what you would like them to do because people want to support you. And it does, but, and I speak from experience, it does take you stepping out of your comfort zone to do that. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, and let people talk about it. Let people know what you're out there. Like you, Sam, you know, you, you, you put your, your stories are always so exciting because you, you're always, you, in, like you, you have your stories that you share about what's going on with, within the vampire community, but also we see what's going on with Samantha as well. And I'm sure, as you said, you know, doing certain things took you out of your comfort zone, but then it sure. really creates your community be like I love how she's out there trying new things that's so motivating I you know it it makes me want to connect with you some more you know Samantha you should really go back to that company and offer them to do an online course that people during the summer and fall can take about snowmobiling so that they're ready for winter yeah and and I think and I've said this before you know Online courses are not just for coaches or digital consultants. They're also not just for service-based businesses. I've seen a lot of product-based businesses generate great revenue, great sales by creating a course. So exactly, for example, you know, a snowmobiling company or, or a company like I've, I've seen, um, I've seen like a bike, a cycling, they sell cycling parts for bikes and cycling accessories, right? Creating a course on how to get started with cycling, which was huge last summer as people were looking for different ways to be active and outside while still social distancing, right? These are things that um, it it just exemplifies your authority. It gives you another, now, now I think one of the things that Crystal said was, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's so interesting because with social media, it is about relationship building, but we sometimes only see ads from, and this is really, I see it with product-based companies. I'm only seeing their ads. So I'm only seeing them asking me to buy something. Right. And so as a service-based business, that messaging is confusing. Cause I'm like, wait a second over here though. Right. But I think that things just are different based on, based on what it like, like, Kim talked about like the, the strategies for, for her business and, and kind of what she's been doing, you know, it's different based on what your goals are. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even that puts you outside of your comfort zone. When I'm working with a client and I say, okay, well, what do you want your online course to do for you? Tell me about your business. Tell me about your plans. Tell me about your, tell me about your, like your business model. Right. And so it's, it's really, it's really funny because like the, that cycling company is selling, um, putting the course together may not be selling it. They might be, it might be a free course that they've put together because they're monetizing in other ways. And so it's, I think one of the things that's so important is it's just understanding what it is that you want from the actions you're taking and asking for the sale. Because when we don't, when we don't know where we're going and we don't know, we haven't made that plan. We don't end up asking for the sale. If there's no product on it, we don't ask for the sale. And uh, it was actually, it's actually the video we shared this week on my YouTube channel. Um, you end up in the friend zone. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And nobody, and that's like the business owner's worst nightmare. I don't want to be in the friend zone. Exactly. Right? I want to sell. That's what I'm here to do because in selling, and, and this can be uncomfortable for many, but in selling, that's how you're making the change that you're here to make. That's yeah. how you're doing the work that you're here to do. Mm-hmm. And most people won't make the change unless there's some sort of financial investment, unless they have, they mm-hmm. have something. Um, mm-hmm. I had a client recently done, done this person's first book. We had started the process in December of, of doing the second book. Things got stalled out. So I was talking to the person last week and he works with a business partner. So I work with, with the mm-hmm. both of them and, yeah. you know, I work with the client for the book and I work with the other guy for the financial stuff. Mm-hmm. And so we're talking and he's kind of hemming and hawing and, you know, he was dealing with some inner stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he's like, you know, it's a good thing I haven't started paying for this yet. And I, I looked at the person and I said, um, I said, you started paying for it back in December <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because his business partner took care of all that. He's yeah. like, I've been paying for it all this months and I haven't done anything on it. And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
all of a sudden that was a motivation to get started and and move sure. forward right uh Absolutely. but i think you know part of being your your comfort zone i think part of uncomfortable is also thinking outside the box and you know samantha when you're talking about the, the bicycle online course you know for them like this the, the snowmobiling and the bicycling are opposite to each other. You know, one's predominant in the winter, one's predominant in the summer. But what the bicycling is, you know, they could put together courses in the winter that show you how to tune up your bike in your garage or, you know, yeah. in your basement and that, or how to upgrade it. And of course you have to buy the parts Absolutely. from them. You know to upgrade so you know they could also have a they could also have a, a book out right that yeah. they're selling about cycling right there's so many there's so many different options exactly now yeah. i want to transition here samantha because you had an experience recently that massively took you out of your comfort zone I, I did. And, and I think, and, and we've talked about, you know, so far we've, we've talked about uh, building authority and the different ways building authority can take you out of your comfort zone. And, and, you know, it'll definitely building authority is how you're going to get out of the friend zone. And for me at the beginning of this year, I invested in a media coach and that was hugely outside of my comfort zone because while I speak a lot on, while well, I speak a lot on, on stages, especially virtual stages right now, and I do podcasts, I have never, like, I have never been on television and her area of specialty, her area of specialty is, is helping women entrepreneurs amplify their voice and get their messaging out there on, uh, on, t on television. Um, and she's a former news reporter here in Canada. Her name is Jennifer Singh and she's newsworthy. Um, amazing, amazing coach, but also holding me accountable because of course I, I had put this off for a long time because it was so outside of my comfort zone. And one of the things that, you know, people will, people will, will say to me is, you know, that's outside of your comfort zone. Like you're in your Instagram stories talking all the time, you know, you speak regularly, you, you're, you're on podcasts. And the thing, the thing for me is, is that for whatever reason, and, and sometimes we can't explain it, but being on television was really outside of my comfort zone. And so I invested in somebody who, and this is the other, this is the other thing, you know, that can be quite, especially for women, you know, for women, it's hard for us to invest in our businesses to go and get, go out and get loans um, and all that. And, and, and that kind of, you know, investment and backing. But for me, you know, I, I invested in, in her and having her teach me and guide me, but also hold me accountable and, and take me outside of my comfort zone because that, that was what I needed. Right. And, and so, and, and it, and it did, I was, I was on, you know, national news, a national news channel and uh, um, a local Toronto, a local Toronto morning show um, on, on some pretty big channels up in here in Canada, CTV news channel and global news morning. And if I hadn't, you know, found somebody to guide me outside of that comfort zone and somebody I trusted, somebody I knew could help me because of course she's built up her authority. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it wouldn't have happened, yeah. but it, it really is when, when we do that and we get ourselves out there and you guys have heard me say this before, part of building your authority is being clear on your unique selling proposition and your messaging, but also the people who are serving the same client as you but not doing what you do because that's where your reach grows when you can get out in front of other audiences. Now, of course, these, these news channels aren't, aren't necessarily serving any client uh, so much as they're serving the public in their, in their, in their, in their news coverage and, and storytelling, but it got me out in front of other audiences. Mm -hmm. and right? it, it, it builds your credibility. Mm -hmm. I that's what people, people go to stuff that are tested, that people are backing up, right? So mm -hmm. you, you stepping out of your comfort zone, like, and, and I, I, I love when, how you said, it's something that you had put off. So it's not like one day you woke up and decided, oh, you know what? I'm just going to have to be on TV and I'm going to do this. But it was uncomfortable and you did put it off, but you knew in the back of your head, 
if I want to do this, I have to step out and I have mm-hmm. to overcome that fear, overcome that, that, you know, anxiety and find someone who can hold my hand and get me there. Now you're in mm-hmm. front of different audiences, but you're also, you have all this great content to, to, um, to verify and, and really, you know, again, your authority, you know, make sure that you're the authority. So when people go on and they're like, who is Samantha King? And they go on, they see, well, wow, she's been on these news, news stations. She's been on this. She, she has these channels and it builds your credibility. And then it gives your, your new audience who you're trying to meet um, or trying to reach that, that comfort in knowing I need to connect with this person. Well, again, it's massive social proof. Yes. You know, that's social proof on the next level. Yeah. And I yeah. think something that's that's really important, Samantha, and, and I've been studying this because ultimately it's on my game plan for this year as well, and I'm going to be working with Jennifer as well, um, is the fact that when you're looking at media specifically, like there's lots of other ways to promote yourself, right? Like, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, when we get Carol back on, we'll have to talk about how she's been on so many people's Facebook lives for free, right? And pages. Yeah. Before the pandemic, she spoke on, she spoke on stages, stages. Of, you know, Fortune 500 yeah. companies. Yeah. You know, I, I've been speaking on stages. I do a lot of other people's mm-hmm. podcasts. Obviously, as a podcast host, I make a good podcast guest. But one of the things that you did that was important, especially when it comes to TV and radio, is people think they can get on TV and radio by themselves. Usually you can't. It's very rare to get on television and radio without knowing the right people. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, you know, if that's the route that you want to go, if you feel that you're ready for TV and radio, you need to find that media coach, you need to find that person who has all the right connections, because, mm-hmm. you know, what Samantha wasn't saying, and, you know, Samantha did her work, there's no question about it, she did her work, she did everything that she needed to do. Mm-hmm. From her end, she took the training, she applied it. But because she was Jennifer's client, Jennifer's going behind the scenes and saying, hey, you know, Samantha's going to be sending you this media pitch today. You need to look at it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, when your media pitch came through and it was perfect. Right. It wasn't a piece of junk. It was good work. Yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer made sure of that. Yes, she is. Right. Yeah. You know, but behind the scene, she's mm-hmm. going, she's reaching out to her connections so that your pitch gets put to the top of the list to be looked at. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get mixed up in the, you know, two to 300 they might be looking at that day. And it, I think one of the things that's really key there is this idea that, you know, people, people, and, and it all, it also goes back to now, for, of course, Jennifer, I hired Jennifer and, and, and continue to, to work with her and even refer my clients to her. Um, but I think one of the things, you know, is, and it goes back to testimonials too, is that it's important to, you know, deliver on, like I said, here's what I do. Here's why I'm great at it. Here's how I can help you. And here's how people feel. And here's how other people have experienced help from, from working with me, right. Or change. Um, but it's important, you know, to, to make that, to, to make, to be able to ask those questions and to be asked, to be asking those for those testimonials, because that's how some people don't, I mean, for me, I, my, our vampire builder squad, you know, my, my entire just way of operating and doing business is bringing up names of people who aren't in the room. Mm -hmm. Right. When I'm, when I'm in the room, I'm going to bring up the names of the people who aren't there. Just like, you know, I brought up Jen's name today and, but not everybody does that. So when you get out there and and you start talking to people and you, and you make these, make these uh, commitments, absolutely, you know, don't hesitate to be out there and ask that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know somebody who, who, uh, who does uh, financial financial coaching and, you know, her tagline it on, she puts in her emails, you know, I'm never too busy for your referrals. Right. And it's not to me, 
I'm like, that is such a catchy, like here it is in my head, right? It's such a catchy, it's such a catchy thing. It's such a catchy phrase for me, for whatever reason, it sticks in my head, but that people, people might, you might be thinking, well, that's really salesy or that's really forward. Never crossed my mind. Mm-mm. I was like, oh, great. I, it, it immediately, I was like, that's right. I know, I know so-and-so who needs to talk to this person, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it, we get so caught up in our own heads because it's so far out of our comfort zone. But if we don't take that leap, you know, that's the first step, but it's also finding the right people to help you. Yes. Right. Because yeah, there's all kinds of nuances in media and I needed the training. I needed to learn. I needed, um, and it wasn't just the pitch, right? Jen held my hand all the way through. She did media training with me. She helped me practice. She helped me get comfortable. Um, I was still, you know, a nervous, a nervous wreck, but I, because I had her there and to hold me accountable as well, you know, that, that I achieved a goal, Mm -hmm. which I, which I, which was huge. And part of entrepreneurship, you know, a lot of entrepreneurship, there's the things that we do within our zone of excellence. And then there's the rest of it, which some of it can be nerve wracking and, People can look at you and say, you know, like, oh, but like, like I said, oh, but you're, you're always on like Instagram, your Instagram stories. And, you know, but that doesn't mean that, that I wasn't outside of my comfort zone, that I wasn't nervous. Right. Well, TV and radio, like that's another bird. Like when you get on your, your social media and you're just chatting away, you know, if if it's, if it's not the greatest there aren't really a lot of consequences for it. And you can delete it. You can delete and you can delete it. But <laughs> you know, when when you're now on national news mm-hmm. and it's there forever. And you're live with and a you're professional, live. like with a professional reporter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is that you know, if you want to get on other ones, your first ones have to be good. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not something where you really fail your way forward. There, okay. there are aspects as an entrepreneur where you can fail your way forward, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, get out of your comfort zone, try something, you fail, you try again, no big deal. Mm-hmm. This is not one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not. And, and I think that you've got to get, you know, everything that we are doing should be strategic. Mm -hmm. And I know for women that can be very uncomfortable as well, because, you know, strategy, sometimes they feel like strategy is a dirty word, but it, but being intentional is okay. But, but they're, they're kind of just synonyms for me, right. In this context, but, um, you know, that's how you get ahead. And it's not like, if I say I was strategic in the, in the topic that I pitched and when I pitched it and the fact that I hired a media coach, like that's just business building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and that's like, like Crystal for you, you know, you would then take that because then again, I, I'm still going to be intentional, but really strategic Mm -hmm. with what I, with what I do with the interview afterwards, right? Like if, if I was your customer, you, your, your client, you'd say, okay, now here's how we're going to use this thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And to, I, I liked, man, the point just came out of my head, but it is, it, it came out of my head. <laughs> I'll have to like come back to that, but back to the, the next stepping out of the comfort zone is where, you know, and I think we mentioned, Kim mentioned it before, but it is making those type of investments in your life you know you want to write a book you have to make an investment like Mm -hmm. you know and sometimes tv say oh here book deal flat on your lap we're just gonna no for you want to become an author you have to seek it out what is the message that you want to work um put out there and i need to hire someone like kim to make this happen right because then they can guide me on how to make it happen Mm -hmm. and then you know building out the courses and going back to to asking for help um, and making sure that you're lined up with the right people that can, oh, I remember the point now. We as women too, and I think as, and I say women, because I feel sometimes I see men don't have a problem with this and some men probably do, but I, I think mostly with women, I've noticed that to your point, Sam, is that we'll feel afraid to say strategic or step out. 
or ask or when she asks, oh, I'm never too busy for referrals and you're feeling, oh, that's salesy. But we are, when we, when we start our business, we are a, a business entity. So think mm -hmm. uh, a car, a, a car dealership is never afraid to put out and say, we have, we're, we, we have a special going on yeah. in your friend and get this amount off of your car. Right. So why, like, so we have to feel comf confident and, and step out of that. Oh, well, like small, I am small and be like, I am a full blown business mm -hmm. and this is the special I'm running. Yeah. You know? So I, I, so I think some, that's probably a whole mindset shift too, just like, oh, I'm, I am my one business of this. And I, if I say this, they'll think these things. And I, I liken it. I go back to always go back to that car dealership. Well, maybe I can be the car dealership of mm -hmm. social media and have a special going on or have this going on or say, if you refer someone to mm -hmm. me, I'm going to give this off to you. Exactly. Yeah. Now, one of the things we're out of time, things, ladies. <laughs> what a great topic! I know. Right? Just just say, you know, one of the things we one of the things we say in the squad all the time is that you know strategy uh, strategy is not a dirty word, but you know being in a space where making money is not a dirty word. We're we're business owners, and we and a part of being a business owner is selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And it goes back to saying, I'm great. Here's how I can help you. I know I'm good at what I do. And look at all this proof of all the other people I've helped. Yeah. You know what? Why don't we continue this on next month's episode? Yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. once we get Carol chiming in on this, she'll yeah. really speak to the mindset mm -hmm. part of all of this, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Layering one, that in. One quick final thought, ladies. <laughs> you Go know ahead. what your your horizons um there's growing up there's this prayer my dad always said the prayer of Chavez where you always ask God to expand your horizon and ha horizons and as business owners that's something we should always want to expand our horizons which means it takes us always stepping out our out of our comfort zone but we grow from that Absolutely. And I think that one of the things that Carol will bring to the conversation next week is how a lot of the time, you know, the, those questions that we're, we're saying to ourselves, you know, I don't want to appear salesy or, you know, I, or, or, or any of those, those, those inner thoughts that are coming in are just that they're inner thoughts. Other people are, are here to celebrate you. They want to celebrate you. Um, and, and sometimes as terrifying as it may be, it really is about doing that inner work. And so I can't wait to hear Carol's um, empowering questions yeah. around how to deal with that mindset, feeling that those, those things, right. I'm too salesy. I can't ask for a referral, all of that kind of stuff. And I think too, here, here's the thing. If you want to move to the next stage in your business, you better get ready to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. because you have to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I grew really fast as a child. Okay, everything on me grew fast. I busted out of shoes. Like literally my toes would bust out. The the my shoes would be open on the ends where my toes would have pushed out. Okay, so I was constantly growing. It was not comfortable. It was awkward. There were stages where my body parts were not in the line with each other and I would fall and trip because my feet were way bigger than the rest of me and mm -hmm. you know, um I would go through growing pains because my, my body would hurt because it was growing so fast at times. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're going to grow your business, you are going to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. you might as well get used to that, but don't stay uncomfortable, practice, learn, grow, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes comfortable. Then when you're ready for the next stage, guess what happens again? <laughs> you get uncomfortable yeah. so this has been samantha king crystal duku and kim thompson pinder on the author to authority podcast thank you so much for listening and we will see you on the very next episode bye now mm -hmm.